They say knowledge is power, but you need the wisdom to understand what this actually means. Welcome to the Decoding Health Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Urban A. Kiernan. Each week, we will share the stage with renowned experts as we dismantle the black box of knowledge and unravel the complexities of science and its practical applications in our daily life. This show is committed to illuminating topics ranging from personal health and wellness to cutting edge biopharmaceutical advancements and beyond. Let's get started. If you're ready to enhance your wellness with personalized care designed to optimize performance, look no further than Foresight Chiropractic. Utilizing state-of-the-art gentle and non-invasive techniques, Dr. Lavender and his dedicated team are here to help you recover quickly. Feel your best and reach new heights in your performance. Visit them at foresightchiropractic.com and don't forget to mention the Decoding Health Podcast when you book your appointment to receive a free consultation and special discount on a nervous system exam. Once again, that's foresightchiropractic.com. Okay, so we've been doing a lot in breaking down body performance, human general performance, and going over biohacking tips, tricks, and wellness. Talk to me about MOTS C. What is it? How do we take it? Do we want to take it? Is it regulated? I have lots of questions about this particular peptide. Gotcha. And I'll I'll answer the majority of your questions. And again, just with all of this biohacking stuff, I'm going to throw this disclaimer out there. I am not going to tell anybody dosing regimens, dosing strategies, stacking, all of the stuff that would be associated just because of the regulatory aspect around this, I'm, I'm not throwing any of that stuff out there. We're going to talk about what it is, what is the science around it, what is the published benefit, what are the published risks, and then if this is something that you want to do, turn around and make that decision for yourself because we're all grown-ups here. So, long story short, MOTS-C stands for mitochondrial mitochondria open reading frame of the 12S RNA type C. So that's, I had to write that down on a piece of paper simply because it's a lot, but Rolls right off the tongue. Rolls right off the tongue. So, you know, again, it's just MOTC for short. Um, And what is it? So your body actually produces this. And so it's actually generated in your mitochondria. And we've talked about mitochondria before. Each of your cells has normally like a hundred, maybe even more, depending upon the the cell type, mitochondria, and those act as the powerhouse of the cell. And so when your 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 body is stimulated by exercise, ooh, exercise is, is, is stimulation, your mitochondria actually produce MOTSI, and it helps improve cellular function. Now, what happens is, and I think I mentioned this before on on the show, is some of that MOTC, even though it's produced within the cell, will wind up in your bloodstream. And then that MOTC will go to other cells, enter the cell, and then turn around and stimulate the mitochondria. So even if you are only working a particular body part or something, there is actually scientific evidence through the application of MOTC, more of a systemic or holistic full body type benefit. Okay, again, work out the entire body, but if you're only working out certain regions, there are other parts of your body that will receive benefit partially due to the production of MOTC. So now here you have, um, this stimulation of the mitochondria and very similar to like what we had talked about previously with methylene blue. It's you get your powerhouse of your cell rubbing and up and running. Your, you produce more energy because your mitochondria, that's where your, your TCA cycle, citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle, again, three big words for the exact same thing. That is where the majority of your energy that ATP and adenosine triphosphate is actually produced. And um, you just have more of those molecules, your, your, your high performing um, cell types and tissues, such as your muscle, your brain, your liver, 
they're all going to go and perform better. Now, why should you care? Well, let's talk about glucose uptake because most Americans, I think it's 93% of Americans are to some degree metabolically, metabolically incompetent. Okay, and that's because of the growth of obesity. You could even be at a normal weight, but you can still have metabolic challenges in which your body just does not utilize glucose properly. And so this is something, at least in theory, through the use of something like MOTC, you can actually turn around and improve upon that. So there is some level of data. Um, there isn't a lot of clinical data Clinical meaning done in humans. There's a lot of stuff that's done in animals, but you know, maybe unless you've been divorced and you know your ex, there's a huge difference between a human and a rat. <laughs> so unless you have like an ex-spouse out there or something like that, it would hard to make that association that rats and humans are the same. I just want to throw sure. a, little, a little bit of humor <laughs> <laughs> out there. But you know, no, nonetheless, it's just the metabolic, the metabolic differences between you know, rodentia versus primata, those are the families that we, we fit into are grossly different. However, they are seeing benefits with the use of MOTC from a endocrinology standpoint. So there's actually some data that suggests that it can help in um, ameliorating obesity. Okay, so burning fat. It can improve insulin sensitivity. And the benefit of that is it would help you in the treatment of, potentially help you in the treatment of um, type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance. Okay, so those, those are the, 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 the pathway along that, you know, disease uh, um, uh, pathogenesis. Um, so mitochondria or MOTC would have an influence there. There is some benefit regarding cognitive function. If MOTC winds up crossing the blood-brain barrier, getting to the brain, just making your neurons more effective and efficient because they have mitochondria too. Also require a lot of glucose or ketones in terms of being able to work. So again, there's a lot of evidence that's out there suggesting potential benefit. However, though, as a part of MOTC's biological activity, it does increase your AMPK pathway. And that's a phosphorylation pathway, which is extremely important for, for um, uh, your metabolism, glucose use, but it also has certain influences regarding cardiovascular health. And you could end up this is always the risk when you're dealing with something that is influencing um, AMPK is you could wind up with heart palpitations, um, tachycardia, uh, which means that your heart starts beating really fast, um, even potentially AFib, um, atrial fibrillation, in which your atrium begin beating so fast that it actually isn't a heartbeat. It's just kind of like a, a quiver or a flutter, which could be actually potentially life-threatening. Now, it's not to sit there and say MOTC will unequivocally do that. That is some of the concerns because of the lack of clinical data. Like I even brought this to some colleagues of mine at Yale University School of Medicine, very, very high level endocrinologists, very well respected in the world they were not so enthused about this because of the negative influence of other drugs that have influenced AMPK. And there's no evidence to suggest that this would not result in the same type of negative side effect. So there needs to be more data. Now, the whole reason why I brought all of this forward is partially so you understand and you know, but MOTC is not approved for human use. Okay, and that is a part of the reason why. And there's all of this controversy at one point in time because it is produced by the body that compounding pharmacies could make this, this uh, 16 mer, it's you know, 16 amino acids, you know, 
uh, Mott C is very, very small. They were producing it, putting into a formulation, and then people were injecting it into themselves. The thing is, though, is very recently it got put onto uh, the category two, in which there's huge safety concerns. And so all of Mott C out there is supposed to be labeled as research use only. There is not supposed to be any guidance that's given on it. Um, I know physicians who are treating patients who are taking MOTC and everything gets annotated in the patient's notes that the patient is electing to do this on their own. Their dosing strategies, they've determined this on their own and their role as their clinician is to monitor them for any potential negative side effects. So we're there just to make sure that nothing bad happens. But as a licensed professional, I have nothing to do with them doing it other than the fact that they're telling me that they're doing this. I'm giving zero guidance on that. And that's just the God's honest truth of where MOTC fits into American society right now. I know there was one company, uh, Cobar Therapeutics, um, they were trying to innovate their own version of MOTC um, as an actual pharmaceutical. Last time I checked, they were not doing so well. Uh, but I, was, I, I couldn't find any data Got it. regarding it. Um, and so, you know, general questions was, is it just, you know, maybe they were just bad stewards of money and they ran out of money. That happens in a lot of companies. Or is there something wrong with the actual molecule because it is dealing with the cons potential of the AMPK? Was it leading to some sort of side effect? So again, I can't comment on either side of that coin. From what I understand from people, they feel great on it. Awesome, I totally support that. Uh, personally, do I have some level of interest in this? Sure. Why not? I'm all about, you know, how do I hack my body and move this forward? Um, however, though, one of the general questions that I have for this is if you're already doing a lifestyle and diet in which you are already revving up and maxing out your, your mitochondrial function, since the benefit of this molecule is all predicated on taking mitochondrial function to the next level, are you able to go and squeeze anything more out of it? And what is the risk to reward that's associated sure. with that? So again, I can't comment on that. That's something that you as an individual who has autonomy over your body, hopefully, um, you go and you make those decisions for yourself. But I just wanted to go and just kind of throw that all out there because it is one of those things, hashtag trending. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of interest in that. Again, if this works out and is is something that works for you, by all means, have at it. I, I have no say in it. However, though, I just want to throw that out there, good, bad, and different, all the information regarding that. Just so you can't be sitting there saying, well, I didn't know. Well, now you freaking know. Now you know. Now you know. And again, that's the whole point of the show. So I really appreciate you bringing this forward. Yeah. Hashtag, hashtag, Motsi. All the hashtags, all the things we can do to biohack and make ourselves better is fabulous. Yeah, this it, one seems a little questionable at the moment. <laughs> well, I, I, again, that that's a part of being innovative. I'm going to spin that on a positive light. It's just you're 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 dip you're dipping your toes into water that nobody's ever truly explored. So, if you want to be that guinea pig, so to speak, you know, that's your personal choice. You know, you're doing this with that. It's just be very very wary of where you buy this from because the the quality you can get ads for this on social media you know yeah. if you do a search you're going to get ads from companies on this again it's ruo research use only um there's other people who sit there and turn around and say they're going to prescribe this again i already again i know her, they've been on this show before in which they are dealing with with patients who are voluntarily taking this stuff. They can't put their license on the line 
regarding this. So there's a lot of gray area regarding what people are doing. Again, I'm not here to go and give guidance on this is what your regimen should be, how long you should take it for. There's plenty of other people who are throwing that out there, go off of their guidance. But nonetheless, it's, it's um, again, I'm not even common as to where you can turn around and trusted sources for buying. Sure. You know, you need to do your research. The only thing that I would recommend for that is, you know, good manufacturing practices. This is being done from a licensed source. Um, and then independent third-party testing. And they, they need to be able to provide you with a C of A, a certificate of analysis if requested, because a lot of these places come back and they say, oh, it's 98% pure. Okay, fine, that's wonderful. What's what is the that? other 2%? That is, you know, and, and again, I'm gonna throw this out there. Most of these places get their API, their active pharmaceutical agreement from another country and the manufacturing process, they, they do that because it's economical. And it's widely known that a lot of these APIs from this other country are highly contaminated with things like heavy metals. And so you really want to avoid putting things like cadmium and lead into your body. And just again, buyer beware. You know, read the label. Re read the label if it's even on the label because remember this is unregulated so they don't have to disclose they don't have to have a label they don't have to have a label and so again again i've already said it like three times on this show buyer beware again if you want to do it awesome I'm not going to dissuade you against it but and if it works for you and you feel great and it takes you to the next level thumbs up it. for you awesome